Alright, this is Joe Pickup with SoMuchMonsters.com. I'm going to give you a little rundown of how we might get a new weapon into Skyrim. Uh, we'll start this out peeking at our Fallout 3 archive utility. Um, and you'll note, you'll note I'm opening up just the mesh file. We don't actually need the textures currently. So we'll step in from We'll step in uh, from the meshes, the meshes archive, down through to weapons, then into the iron folder. This is where we're going to grab our original meshes for all the iron weapons. We're only going to use one, but we may as well dump them all right now. So action, extract selected files, and in this case, we're going to just drop it right into the data folder. So it's whatever the Skyrim folder is that you have. In my case, it's Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Data. Uh, we're going to dump them directly into the data folder. It will keep the the tree structure, so we'll get weapons, iron, and then our files. Straight from there, we're going to jump into Max and import our reference model. I'm going to grab the iron longsword as a reference, so we'll be able to get all the information about the size of the hand, where the, the placement of the grip is, and things of that nature. Grab first person longsword. Uh, the import side, we don't need anything checked. Animation, we need nothing checked. We have actually on this model no animation. We also do not need to check skin modifier. Basically, the rest of this is fine. Let's say import. We'll then import an OBJ of a model I'd created earlier. I'm grab my sword.obj. Now note right away, this guy is not oriented correctly, so we're going to take a look at that. What can we do to fix that? Oh, conveniently, I just got to rotate this way. So I'll rotate that, and I'm going to make sure that it gets on a flat plane. So I'm going to say negative 90 here. Yours won't necessarily be negative 90. Uh, in fact, if if you'd built this with this in mind, you opened up your reference NIF first, and then just started building your mesh, knowing what you were going to replace, you would have no problems at all. I'm a bozo and I did not do that, so here we are. Um, my handle is actually in the same spot. It's a little bit thicker, but it should be fine. We're going to just leave this as is. Um, all that matters here is that we make sure that we freeze our transforms real quick for cleanliness sake, and we won't be setting up a material in Max as the exporter doesn't give the correct data yet. I'd say within a month that sh all that should be sorted out and Exporting this won't have any of this crazy NIF scope stuff we're about to do. But for now, all we need to do is grab our base model, the original, or not the original model, our new model. You'll see there's my model selected. And I'm going to just export selected. So file, export, selected. I'm going to leave all the rest of that trash in there and just dump this into our Skyrim data meshes, weapons, iron and select net immerse gamebryo kf and nif right now we don't want to overwrite the first person sword even though we will be in the end we need to get some data from it first so first here's my new sword export the name's kind of irrelevant in here uh the only real important thing to uncheck is generate strips we don't need that uh, you can turn on flatten hierarchy and update tangent space Collapse transforms and zero transforms. These these are all kind of cleanliness things. But since we're only exporting one mesh and we're going to remove most of the extra data anyway, we don't really need to do a whole lot of this stuff. Sorting is fine with more complex models that you're exporting. Uh, it may be more important. We do want to set it to be Skyrim. That's important. And we do. Oh well, no, that's it. Just I mean, emulate this and you should be in good shape. Just make sure you don't generate tri strips. So uncheck that. And then we have a NIF. Now we've got our NIF. We can bounce over to NIF scope. This is where our friend new sword export NIF will be opened. And we're going to actually do some pretty cheaty stuff. This is this is a part of the, the process that will go away soon. So keep, keep yourself up to date. It's not too difficult. It's just a little stupid. Basically, all the things we're about to do will be negated by a uh, better workflow. So we need two windows. We're going to get our original model, our new, the the, uh, the reference model that we had, the iron longsword, 
and we're also going to open up our new sword export. I will have two windows open at once, so Control N or File New Window, and then load up our first person long sword. You'll see the first person long sword, you'll see it has textures hooked up already. You see it in the viewport. That's that's what we're looking for. We want to make sure we get all the data from that that we can. Um, the onion wants to tell me about Meryl Streep. I don't really care about the onion's Meryl Streep article. It's good. We will do two quick things. Uh, first thing we're going to do is to clean up this mesh a little bit. We will remove the branches for blood lighting and blood effects. These are meshes that we can do. We'll do it again later. We'll create these in another tutorial. But for for uh, the sake of brevity, we will go here. So you select the NI tri shape after opening up the fade node. Right click it, go to block, remove branch, and do the same with the blood effects. Block, remove branch. So now we don't have the basically the sock that goes over the blade to display our, our blood um, and gore. We do want one thing, but before we remove the old model, this is going to be the the, uh, the carrier. We're going to actually put everything into this and then overwrite it. So we'll have our new weapon inside here. First thing we want to do before we do that is is select our BS Letting Shader property. What we're going to do is get all the, the material and texture data set up correctly from here by right-clicking and saying Block, Copy Branch, and then going over to our new sword export, and you'll see in here there's no shader property there is a material property that we can remove before we do this block remove branch and then we will just right click and say block paste branch in order to get this into the hierarchy of this and I try shape we need to select the try shape and scroll down to the bottom this is how we're gonna link up our shader to our model you'll see at the very bottom there's a properties drop down. If you double click in the first value box that says none, you'll see right here there's one that says none, double click and we're going to give this a number. The number is going to be the node the node number for the shader. So the node number is three. We'll say three down here, hit enter, and now you'll see it'll move it into the hierarchy underneath the NI tri shape. It's now a child of NI tri shape and we have it hooked up. So now you'll see textures show up. Now they are the wrong textures because they are the original Iron Swords textures. You can fix that very quickly by opening up the BS shader property, lighting shader property, going into texture set, and down here in block details, you'll see textures. You can open that up. And then you'll see the name of the Iron Longsword a few times. And we will replace these. Let me show you the textures real quick before we jump into that. I have them open in Photoshop. And I've already saved them as DDSs. I will talk to you, talk to you about them for a second. The underscore D is our diffuse texture. That's the color map. Uh, this can have a transparency map in the alpha. I currently do not, so that can go away. Delete that. There's no transparency needed on this. No, no cutouts or anything fancy. So that's our diffuse, just RGB with the option of an alpha. There is an Iron sword, or new Iron Sword N, which is our normal map. You can tell by the crazy blues and purples. Um, the alpha of this texture is actually our specular mask. So this will mask where it's shiny and where it's not. Not where it's reflective and where it's not. That's our final mask. So RGB is normal data. Alpha is our specular mask. And our final texture is the Iron Sword EM, which is... RGB mask for the the uh, sorry the environment map. So where we we do our faked reflection. So we'll save those out as DDSs, and then now we'll have them in the right format to be able to jump into the game. So we have right now we've got the longsword D or just longsword. So this is actually the diffuse. The first one's the diffuse. Select that guy jump over to new iron sword underscore D or whatever you've named your diffuse. Now you see that the texture hooks up there. Um, that's good. That's a good sign. We will go and grab our normal map, which is the second one. New iron sword N dot DDS. It's our normal and specular. We will leave alone the, the shiny doll. That's actually the, the cube map that's being used on this model. 
Um, and it's actually used globally for the iron swords, so we'll, we'll keep that together for for a consistency. And then we're going to grab that last texture that's that's listed there. That's the EM, so we'll get our environment mask. And that will be just here, new iron sword em.des. And now our textures are all hooked up. This tri shape has uh, the actual shape data, the shader, and the texture set. All right, so next step, and we'll do this part twice. So we take the NI tri shape, not the NI node, and say right click, block, copy branch, and we go over to our first person long start. This is actually going to be the final thing we do here. We can remove our original iron long start, and you'll see if we right click, block, remove branch, our model goes away. But it's cool because we're going to paste in our new one that we know is oriented correctly since we did that in max. Uh, we can say paste branch. Now you'll see it's in the model, it's in the, the NIF file, but it's not in the hierarchy. We want to get it in the hierarchy so it's underneath this BS fade node. Um, and we do that very similarly to how we connected the, the lighting, uh, lighting properties. We can actually select the BS fade node. And in this case, instead of properties, we're going to open up the children drop down. And you'll see there's a bunch of empty objects from where we removed those meshes. Uh, we can go double click in the first empty one and pick out the name of our tri shape. So we select it. We can make sure, just double check. There's our tri shape. It's number 17. So let's go back up there and we'll type in 17 here. And you'll see it hopped up into the hierarchy. And we should be good there. Um, you can get rid of the excess children by hitting the refresh up here. Apparently not today. Okay, well whatever. It's not important. Don't worry about it. Uh, well, that's actually this mesh is all done. We, it's, it's got its the model, it's got its texture, and it's its lighting properties. So we can go ahead and say file, save as, and we'll save this as our first person long sword. And our final step will be to do the same thing we've just done, hooking this up and removing the excess blood lighting and blood effect. Um, from the, the third person model. So what we see when we are in third person. We've already got this copy, but we can do it again for good measure. Block, copy branch, say file, load. And, and the third person is actually saved without first person in the name. It'll just say, so in this case, we're a first, or first person longsword. So we'll find longsword.nif. There he is. You'll see that's the original model. What we can do is just go right in here, paste right away if we want, block, paste branch, block, remove branch on the, origi the original mesh and the blood effects and the blood lighting. So now you can see We got all of these hooked up. You can see the lighting and texture set. Textures are correct. Blam. And he's good to go. You can look at the children. Doesn't seem to care to refresh, but that's fine. So we should be fine. We'll save this as our save as longsword. And now we're going to straight cook and show this. I'm going to jump in. And my little lizard man is going to have a sword that I created earlier. Because I'm a baller. I can handle that. That iron funding. Don't worry about this, guys. You're not putting me out or anything. And so there we go. We've got our weapon in hand. There's the third person model. You can see the little brown, brown hilt. Let me zoom in. You can see the model is hooked up in third, the first person as well. We'll do some fancy moves for you. Anyway, that's it. That's getting a model, a custom mesh for your weapons into Skyrim. Thanks a lot.